All right, this is SSL Family Dad with Simple Suburban Living. And today I'm taking you along on a project that I've been waiting to do all summer long. And that is I'm going to be converting our wood burning pool heater that we have outside by the pool into a sort of boiler system to heat our garage. And so basically what I'm going to be doing is extending the uh, hot water system from that wood burning pool heater underground pipes into the garage. And I'm going to be using an old car radiator to cycle that uh, hot water through and then blow that heat out into the garage for us. So I have a lot of projects that I'd like to get done this uh, winter and I don't have heat out here. Now our garage is insulated so it holds heat very well. I just need something to get it warmed up and it's very comfortable here. So um, I'll go ahead and take you along on this project and uh, we'll start off outside just kind of getting things set up with the uh, disconnecting the pool heater from the pool and starting to hook it up to our new uh, piping system. All right, so we're up here at the house. Uh, this is the back corner of the garage. And I'm just gonna make a couple holes here. And move up from the bottom of that side. I've got kind of a general um, area of where I need to come through in the garage. So um, I always like to get, whenever you're drilling through siding, just get your hole started and then spin it backwards. And that way you you don't end up grabbing that siding and then messing messing up the siding real bad. One seems like every time I want to get outside, get something done, it's windy, so I apologize as always. So the the PEX tubing here does it does come with a you can buy the special crimping uh, rings here, and then you have a, there's a special proprietary crimping tool that you actually use with this PEX. Tube. That's the correct way to do that. Um, however, the crimping tool is 60 bucks. The the crimpers are more expensive. Um, there's also shark bite fittings that you can get where you can just push this into. Those are real expensive also. So in an effort to keep costs down, I'm going to see if I can get away with using hose clamps here instead. These are you know whatever 30 cents a piece. Okay, so what we've got here is, this is just a, a regular old car radiator that I picked up at the junkyard for 20 bucks. Um, I think it's out of like a Ford Taurus or something like that. It's not a real big one, um, but this should work out just fine. And so the idea here is basically just to um, hook up our circulate, circulatory system or water circulation system, whatever you want to call it. Um, cold water or hot water is going to come in at the top and then cold water or colder water will come out at the bottom. Um, I've got a submersible pump that I'm using in place of a regular circu circulation pump. Um, circulation pumps are actually very expensive. These are pretty cheap. And uh, if this doesn't work here, I can always use it in my aquaponics system. So uh, I got one, just a little submersible pump. And we're going to use this bucket to sit the pump in and this is going to act kind of like a sump tank so we'll have uh, um, the pump will pump water out through the heater and then come in through the radiator cool down and then dump back into the bucket all right first so thing we'll we're going to do here is just get a hole drilled for the pipe coming out from the pump and then also another hole drilled for the pipe coming back from the radiator Smaller one. Okay. And I'm also going to drill a hole for the cord to come out. And we'll do that on the opposite side here. Alright, so we're ready to get some of this PVC glued together and start getting these hoses hooked up. 
Um, one of the things I always recommend doing with your PVC glue and PVC primer, just run a piece of tape between the two cans. Um, it, I can't tell you how many times I've accidentally spilled one of these primers over in someone's basement uh, back when I used to work in uh, heating and cooling. Um, and it's just a, it never comes out of cement um, or pretty much anything else. So this primer is just a, it stains anything. So be real careful with it. Um, tape your cans together that way they don't tip over quite as easily. So uh, first thing we're going to be doing here is just getting the connections made to the uh, pump um, on the inside here. And I'm just coming up to a valve that way I can regulate the flow a little bit better. And a little 90 here at the top. So I'll go ahead and get this put together real fast. Okay, so one of the things I have to do here is um, convert from the size of this uh, radiator hose, which I think is inch and a quarter or inch and a half, inch and a quarter, I think, um, over to my uh, half inch PEX. And so I bought some of this poly tube. This is PVC tube. Um, it's not rated quite up to 200 degrees. It's rated at 175 degrees, but uh, this should work just fine. Um, they didn't have the exact same size that I needed, and so I've got pieces of radiator hose that should fit inside this tube okay, and that I should be able to get on to that, uh, to that tube all right. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a try and see if we can get these to fit um, over top of these uh, radiator fittings here. All right, it was a little bit of a struggle, but uh, I think I got it on there far enough where we can get a good clamp. So. Okay, so we've got our threaded fitting on here now, and now all I'm doing is just doing an adapter from the threaded fitting to a slip fitting, and then to a bushing, which is gonna take me down to my half inch, or a thread where I can screw in my PEX fitting. So that's, that's what I'm gonna be putting together here real quick. All right, so I've got all of our fittings uh, mounted to the radiator in the back there that adapts, or adapts us to our half-inch packs. And I found this spot uh, kind of underneath uh, one of the shelves of my workbench here that actually fits really well. Um, there's some rubber grommet legs on the bottom of this. I just drilled some holes, and it kind of slips right in here and it fits nicely. And I just have a little bracket that I put on the back uh, inside to, to kind of hold it firmly in here. And so this is kind of where it's going to stay. Um, I was originally planning on building a whole other... Uh, stand or table for this to fit in, but it actually fits really well right here. Uh, and I'll show you kind of the back side of it and where all the connections are going to be. Um, it hides everything real nicely. And I'm also going to put a fan behind this that will blow through, of course, to get the heat out into the room. So I'll go ahead and show you the back side here. Okay, so just to take you around kind of all the connections, now we have it all hooked up. So the bucket here has got the pump in it. Water's going to pump out through that hose and go out to the pool heater and then it will come back and let's see if we can get in here and then it will come into the radiator uh, up to that top hose. We'll have a fan back here um, in this little area and I'll build some type of a cowl that will blow the air through, heat the garage, the cooler water will come out the bottom here and then it just zips around and fills the little sump tank back up and then the pump pumps it back out again. So that's the idea. Um, so first step here, now that I have everything kind of hooked up, is gonna be to um, start filling it with water and pumping some water through everything and just seeing if it leaks. Well, so far it seems to be pretty good in here. Uh, I had a couple of drops on one fitting and just needed a little tightening up. Um, I had a little bit of water down here from one of these fittings when I initially started it up, but I've let it run for a few minutes now and it doesn't seem to be dripping anymore, so um, it may have kind of sealed itself up there, uh, but I might need to tighten a few hose clamps down. But so far, so good. And the radiator is not leaking, which is my biggest concern. Um, so we'll go ahead and check outside. I've got a couple fittings out there and see if those are leaking. Well, here's our outdoor fittings and it looks like the hose clamps are 
holding up pretty good. Unfortunately, it's raining, so I wouldn't be able to tell if there was a small leak anyway, but I definitely don't see any drips. Um, I don't see anything big. So I think, I think the hose clamps worked, worked pretty good. Okay, so I've gone around and checked for leaks and everything looks good. The system's running. Uh, I really don't see any issues going on, so I'm going to go ahead and add the coolant that I got. Um, this is basically just a regular old, whatever, antifreeze or coolant, whatever you want to call it, for a vehicle. Um, this stuff is expensive, but uh, it's pretty much necessary. I don't want the water to freeze in these lines. And I also don't want the water to boil if it ever gets that hot. Um, of course, I would have some other failures probably if it got over boiling temperature, but um, this stuff keeps the water from boiling so you don't have any steam or any anything like that going on, any pressure building up, and it also obviously keeps it from freezing. So what I'm going to do here, since I have the system filled with water, and it looks like it took about two and a half gallons of water to fill all the pipe up, so I'm going to start pumping out water and then just start adding the uh, coolant until I can see it coming through in my clear tubing over here. Okay, so I've got this uh, little window fan here that uh, we actually got for free with our camper when we bought it. Um, and I think this is going to work out perfect as a back fan for this radiator. So I've just kind of set a couple 4x4s in here that this will sit on. And I'm just going to slide it in here and just kind of stand it up right next to that, that radiator so it's blowing air uh, right through it. And we'll just set it on high setting here and see how well it works. So I've got a nice hot fire cooking out there in the, in the barrel stove outside um, and it's heating that water up and cycling through here. Um, this really is working way better than I expected it to. Um, I have a temperature or a thermometer on the uh, heat coming out of the radiator here. It's at about 105 degrees. The ambient temperature in the room here is about 63 degrees. So I'm getting a good you know, 40 plus degree split on, uh, on the temperature, which is great. Uh, so I'm really, I'm really happy with this. I think this is going to be nice, you know. It's not something that I'm going to run every day, but I really wanted to have something in the garage that I could, uh, you know, heat the place up without running an electric heater. They're very expensive to run, and they honestly, it takes a really long time to heat the garage up with one of those. Um, with this, I'll be able to start a quick fire in the morning when the kids get off to school and uh, turn the fan on here, let the garage warm up, and then I can come out and, and work on projects here in the garage. I really like to continue to kind of add on to my, my work area and, and build a more of a workshop in here. I've got a lot of projects I want to get done, and so this is kind of where I wanted to start. I've got the winter ahead of me, and uh, now I've got a, a way to heat the garage up and do a nice comfortable temperature so I can get out here to work. So, um, nice thing about this system, using the barrel stove, I use it as my pool heater in the, in the summertime to heat my pool. Um, I've got you know a video on that I'll link over at the end here. Um, I also use, you know, you could use this for anything. So you could set the same system up and put this in your home, uh, in your basement, in a, in a bedroom or whatever, and use it to heat a part of your home without having a wood burner in the home, in, inside. Most insurance companies will not allow a wood burning stove in your home if they, if they do, or in your garage or something like that. If they do, a lot of times they charge more or you just have to kind of not tell them about it, which isn't right either. Um, so this way you can keep the fire outside and just get the heat inside and so it really it really is awesome so real happy with it um, i'll probably do another update video on this uh, a little bit down the road as i get some, kind of uh, more finalized here i'm going to maybe be build a little grate in the front and um, make the airflow a little bit more efficient in the back from the fan so uh, i'll take you guys along for that but thanks for watching if you have any questions throw them down below comments please give me a thumbs up on the video if you think this is a good idea or a cool project or you like the video at all so Thanks for watching. Have a good one.